from Hollywood, the Screen Director's Playhouse. Screen Director's Playhouse, star William Powell, production One Way Passage, director Tay Garnett. The Hollywood Screen Directors present A Prelude to Eternity, the motion picture drama One Way Passage, starring William Powell in his original role of Dan Hardesty with Peggy Dow as Joan. I'm a doctor, therefore a sort of scientist, I suppose. And science isn't supposed to be very sentimental or to believe in the kind of happy ending that this story has. Here it is. Make of it what you will. I've got to believe in it. I saw it happen. I suppose as Joan Ames' doctor, I should have kept her away from the excitement of places like the Bar of All Nations back there in Shanghai. But I couldn't bring myself to spoil her wistful fun. Joan was trying so very hard to pack a lot of living into so short a time. Joan had heard the worldly wise man at her elbow order... Paradise cocktail, please. She ordered the same, and reaching to pick it up, jostled the man at her elbow. Oh, hey, dear, what I... the dickens you... Uh, oh. I'm... I'm terribly sorry. Well, I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> it seems I, I slipped. Uh, we all slipped now and then. But I, I've spilled your drink for you. We both have some left in our glasses. Yes, a few drops. Always the most precious. And I can't imagine a more appropriate time to drink the last few drops of a paradise cocktail. <laughs> Here's hoping you get everything your heart desires. I've got it. Drink. Thank you. Me too. My name's Dan. Mine's Joan. Hello, Joan. Hello, Dan. Goodbye, Dan. Oh, no. That sounds too ruthless. I'm sailing tomorrow. Uh, Honolulu? And then on to San Francisco. Oh. Well, luck allowed us a little time together anyhow. It's hail and farewell, Dan. Listen... Auf Wiedersehen. That means goodbye, doesn't it? Joan? Yes? Break your glass. Why? Do it. All right. Now, I break mine. Now put the stem of your glass across the stem of my glass so it makes a letter X. Why? Please. All right. There. Now, now what does it mean? Well, perhaps X marks the spot where one rare, bright moment was captured. Perhaps. Goodbye, Joan. Bon voyage and auf Wiedersehen. Come in. You rang for ice water, sir? Yes, just put it down on the... Steve. Steve Connell. Don't reach for your gun, Dan. You know I don't carry a gun, Steve. It's too bad you were carrying one that night in San Francisco. That was different. Someone murdered my best friend. And the law didn't do anything about it. So you took the law into your own hands. I'm not sorry. But you're coming back to San Quentin with me, Dan. I'm ready. You killed a man. You gotta pay. I said I'm ready. The boat leaves for San Francisco in one hour via Honolulu. Honolulu. To San Francisco, to San Quentin. And the death house. Well, I'm still ready, Steve. Now we're sailing in ten minutes, Dan. Yeah, I wouldn't lean against that rail if I were you, Steve. I don't get gray hairs about me. Okay, but if that brass pin comes out of that swinging rail, it'll drop you right in the drink. And that would break you all up. 
candidly, no. Well, it won't happen. They broke three of my pals the first time you escaped. It isn't going to happen to me. As a matter of fact... Look out, Steve. There goes the rail. Hey, hey let go of me. Hey! Now. Now to swim for it. Dan. Swim for it. Dan. Dan, come back. Yeah, try to catch me. You pushed me in. So long, Flatfoot. I can't swim, Dan. Help. You're lying to me. No, no, Dan. Quick, I can't swim. Help. Help. Oh, okay, Steve. I'm a fool, but I'll get you out. Look, Dr. Duncan, he's got him. Dan's got him. Now, take it easy, Joan, please. Oh, Dan got him just as he was going down. Oh, good for you, Dan. Nice going. There. There, they've thrown him alive. That's all there is to it, Joan. Nothing to get excited about. No. No, it... it, It's all right. Are you all right? Just... Joan. Just a little tired. Take me to my stateroom, Doctor. Will you? Thank you, Doctor. I feel much better now. I've I've told you, Joan, you must not get excited. You're cutting your months to weeks and your weeks to days. And my days to hours. But if I remain quietly here in my stateroom and deny myself even the mildest pleasures, I may live to see San Francisco again, is that it? You're putting it rather cruelly. Oh, no. Because I'm going to crowd a lifetime of intense, beautiful happiness into the short time I have left. Even if it is only for a few hours... I mean to have all the living I can lay my hands on. And now, Doctor, I want to find Dan. I want to see if he's all right. Say, Dan, what is that you're drinking? Perfume? That's a paradise cocktail, Steve. Half gasoline and half nitric acid. Oh, a tough guy, huh? If I was a tough guy, I'd have let you drown today. No, I'll admit you didn't have to save my life. If you let me drown, you'd be a free man now. I appreciate it. Well, that's all right. I might ask you a favor sometime. Oh, yeah? What kind of a favor? I don't know yet. Oh, will you excuse me, Steve? I just noticed a friend of mine sitting all by herself at a table... I'll see you later, Mr. Connell. Hello, Joan. Dan, hello again. Please sit down. Yeah, perhaps I'd better. This is my third paradise cocktail. <laughs> this is my first today. Ah, uh-huh, a convert. Shall we say, his luck? Had a long life? Long enough. Here's to us, Joan. The only us on earth. Here's to it, huh? There you go again. Break yours, too. And cross the stems. That's it. X marks the spot where another lovely moment was captured. Yes. Oh. Well, what is it? Nothing. I, I, I'm just very tired, Dan. A- and very happy. Well, thanks. I'll take you to your stateroom. You, you won't fall overboard again when you're alone, will you? Oh, not now. I've got too much to lose. Good. Because it'll be such fun going ashore at Honolulu. Just you and I. Oh, yes. Don't you want to? Indeed, I do, Joan, but, well, I'll have to get rid of Steve. Steve? Yeah, my partner. He, uh, he wants me to stay in our stateroom and work while the ship is docked at uh, Honolulu. Let me talk to him. Oh, no, 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 uh, let me. Well, here's my stateroom, Dan. Until tomorrow, Joan. Auf Wiedersehen. You sure get around, Dan, even on shipboard. Where you been all these days? In the smokestack? Steve. Hmm? We dock in Honolulu tomorrow. Yeah, I'll have to handcuff you to me, you know. Not tomorrow, Steve. Any time. We're in port. Except tomorrow. 
Tomorrow I'm going ashore without you. You're going to make trouble. Oh, put the gun away, Steve. You wouldn't shoot. You just don't know me, Dan. Steve. Hmm? This girl you've seen me with, she's, she's going ashore tomorrow. I want to be alone with her just for a little, Steve. What do you say? You just had to save my life, didn't you? You owe me that, Steve. And I'm going to hold you to it. All right, Dan. Thanks. Remember your manners, Dan. Thanks, sucker. I'd never seen Joan so radiant as she went down the gangplank when we docked at Honolulu. And I'd been her doctor for a long time. That young fellow she called uh, Dan was with her. And if he was that uh, good for her, he deserved to be with her. content to stay on this lovely, lonely beach the rest of my life. Would you, Joan? Forever. Joan, would you... Would you be content to spend the rest of your life with me? Oh, very content, darling. Even in some very far-off, isolated place? Anywhere and forever. Darling, that man with me, Steve... He's... Yes? Well, he, uh... He wants me to go to San Francisco with him, but, uh... I can't do that. I'm going somewhere else. Alone. But wherever I am, wherever you are, I'll send for you. Oh, no, dear. You won't send for me. Why not? Because I'm going with you. No, Joan. That's impossible. But I've made up my mind. Well, then... There's something that you've got to know. May I have a cigarette, please? Of course. Thank you. Light. How far that little matchstick throws its beams. So shines a good deed in a naughty world. <laughs> or anyhow, something like that. Or maybe I burn my candle at both ends. It will not last the night. But ah, my foes and ah, my friends, it gives a lovely light. Edna St. Vincent Millay. I'm no dope. <laughs> no. I know this, too. It goes, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. No. Oh, what's the matter? I know that, too. And I know how it ends. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life. All my life. And if God choose... I shall but love thee better after death. You see, Dan, I know it too. Oh, Joan. <laughs> Joan, dearest, what is it? It is true, Dan. Oh, say it's true. And that I love you, dearest. And that if God choose... Yes, I shall but love thee better after death. Why are you stopping the car? You must go back to the ship alone. But what about you? I can't go back, Joan. Oh, Dan! Oh, my dear. Oh. That's right. Close your eyes. Well, let me hold you close. Joan, you see, you don't know who I really am or what I am. I'm an escaped convict condemned to die to hang. Well, now you know. You see, Joan, Joan, what's the matter? 
Joan! She's fainted. I've got to take her back to the ship. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of One Way Passage. Starring William Powell in his original role of Dan Hardesty with Peggy Dow as Joan. For the past 12 months, we of the Screen Directors Playhouse have taken pride in bringing you the very finest in dramatic entertainment. We hope that our record of reuniting fine motion picture stories with their original stars and directors has added much to your listening enjoyment. Now we would like to tell you of greater entertainment to come through your acceptance of our program. Beginning next Friday night, at a time one hour earlier, Screen Director's Playhouse becomes associated with one of the greatest names in the entertainment world, RCA Victor. It will be our pleasure on future Fridays to present such great stars and film stories as Claudette Colbert in Tomorrow is Forever, Cary Grant in Mr. Lucky, and Ginger Rogers in It Had to Be You. So remember, next Friday night, one hour earlier, when Screen Directors Playhouse presents Jimmy Stewart starring in Magic Town. Now, back to the second act of One Way Passage, starring William Powell. Joan Ames was deathly pale and still when Dan Hardesty carried her aboard ship that evening. Together, we took her to her stateroom. For a day and a half, it was touch and go with Joan. Dan stayed with us or haunted her door for 30 hours without any sleep. And then when she was momentarily out of danger, I asked to talk to Dan in my stateroom. Is she going to be all right, Doctor? Yes, for the present. I didn't know. I understand now everything she said. She survived this attack. She won't survive another. Any excitement, any shock would surely kill her. But a shock is coming. And through me. I tried to tell her when we were ashore, but she didn't hear me. She'd fainted. She still has to find out that when I get to the States, I'm going to be hanged, Doctor. Great Scott. For murder. Wait, you you can't tell her that. That would kill her. And she'll never know, I promise you. The Golden Gate, Dan. Isn't it lovely? San Francisco. Yeah, we'll be in very soon now. Yes. Oh, it is lovely. It's ugly. San Francisco? What, Dan? Oh, no. No, of course not. I mean that pile of stone there on the North Shore. What is it? A fort? That's San Quentin Prison. Oh, well, I don't like it. Let's talk about nice things. Like being together in San Francisco. Well, I... I'm afraid I'll have to go to Mexico first, on all business. Right. Well, all right. I'll meet you in Mexico. Joan... Acapulco, New Year's Eve. How's that? Well, a lot can happen before then. Say you'll meet me in Acapulco, New Year's Eve. All right. Uh-uh. Not enthusiastic enough. You'll have to take me down to the ship's bar and seal the deal with a toast. A final toast. Come on, Dan. <laughs> Well, Joan, to Acapulco on New Year's Eve. We have a rendezvous, darling. Acapulco. New Year's Eve. (laughs) 
Now yours, Joan. Across the stems. X marks the spot where a lovely moment was captured. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Okay, darling. Okay, darling. Auf Wiedersehen. Ready, Dan? Oh. Yes, Steve. We're docking. I've uh, some final packing to do, Joan. You're seeing you. Don't forget. Coming, Steve. Coming. And if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. I stood beside Joan, supporting her lightly as we awaited our turn at the gangplank. Joan kept straining and craning to see Dan, and then all at once she spied him. There he is, Dr. Duncan. I just want to wave goodbye once more. Dan! Joan! Joan, Dan. take it easy. Relax. Oh, dear, he doesn't hear me. Dan! <gasps> Doctor! Are you all right? He's handcuffed. He's handcuffed to that man, Steve. Well, I, I didn't tell you, but uh, you see, Dan happens to be a detective. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I was... Well, why didn't he tell me? <laughs> Joan, you're exciting yourself. Oh, it's the other way around, isn't it? Steve is the detective. He's taking Dan away. Please, Joan. I remember now the way he looked at San Quentin with death in his eyes. He's going to die. Dan! Joan! Joan, come back! Dan! Dan, wait! Dan! Dan, wait for me! Hold it, Steve. You want to see her? Hide the handcuffs. Stand close and pull down your sleeve. Dan! Dan, darling! Joan. Not Joan. We said goodbye. We'll meet again. Oh, I, I know. But I saw you from the deck. Joan, you shouldn't have done this. Uh, I had to. I wanted to say goodbye. But we said goodbye. I, I wanted to say it again. Oh, goodbye, Dan. Goodbye, Joan. I I'll be seeing you. Let's go, Dan. Take... Take care of yourself. Oh, Dan! From the deck, I saw Joan turn half about, fall to her knees. And then the crowd gathered about her, and I dashed down the gangplank to be at her side. Will, uh, will someone be good enough to call an ambulance? She, she's dead. son. I'm ready, father. You will have courage, my son. I will have courage, father. Shall we go? Remember not, O Lord, we beseech thee, the sins of his youth, nor of his ignorance. But according to thy great mercy, be mindful of him in the greatness of thy glory. Delicta juventutis, et ignorantius aeus, quae sumus nemeni meres domini, sed secundum magnum misericordiam tua memores domilius in gloria caritatus tuae, agriantum. Acapulco, it was almost midnight, that solemn moment, just before the new year, I stood alone at the bar, having no one to drink with and no patient to take care of, thinking, well, you may very well know what I'd be thinking of that New Year's Eve. 
And then something happened. Senor, be, be more careful, yes? Careful? Well, you break the glasses on the bar. Well, I, I didn't touch those glasses. No? Then who, eh? I looked at the bar, at the shattered remains of two broken cocktail glasses, stem over stem, forming the letter X. S- Senor, if you did not break those two glasses, who did? There is no one else here. <laughs> That's where you're wrong. Senor? Very wrong, indeed. Next week, another great star brings an outstanding performance to the Screen Director's Playhouse. Our story is Magic Town, and recreating his original role will be Jimmy Stewart. Now, here again is tonight's star, William Powell. Thank you, thank you. Well, the coming of New Year's always adds a special value to friendship. And today, I renewed acquaintance with two very old friends. One is a story you just heard, and the other is the man who directed it so magnificently that after 17 years, it was presented to you again tonight. And now I'd like you to meet him, the creator of such fine entertainment as The Postman Always Rings Twice and The Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. My director, Tay Garnett. Thanks, Bill. But you've got to remember I had a lot of help in directing One Way Passage. Yeah? From whom, Tay? Remember how we shot the shipboard scenes aboard an ocean liner off the California coast? Yes, and sailed round and round in circles for two weeks. Well, there was one seagull that followed the ship. Every time we rehearsed a scene, I watched his reaction. I knew we were ready to film it when he flapped his wings and squawked. Well, I'm glad the audience didn't react like that. (laughs) There was only one trouble... The seagulls seemed to get confused during the love scenes. Don't you know why? Uh, Why? That seagull was so dizzy from following that ship, he thought I was the leading lady. (laughs) As for me, Tay, I just watched for your reaction. No actor ever had a finer guide than Tay Garnett behind the cameras. Thanks very much, Bill. And good night. Good night, Tay. Good night, everyone. And good night to you, Tay Garnett and William Powell. Remember next week, Jimmy Stewart on Screen Director's Playhouse, one hour earlier. One Way Passage was presented through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, producers of the Technicolor comedy The Inspector General, starring Danny Kaye. William Powell appeared by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical On the Town, starring Gene Kelly, Frank Sinatra, and Betty Garrett. Peggy Dow will soon be seen with Ida Lupino, Howard Duff, and Stephen McNally in Woman in Hiding, a Universal International picture. Tay Garnett is currently directing The Challenge, starring Mickey Rooney and Pat O'Brien. Included in tonight's cast were Peggy Dow as Joan, Stephen Dunn, Ted Von Els, John Daner, Don Diamond, and Frank Barton. One Way Passage was adapted for radio by Milton Geiger, and original music was composed and conducted by William Lava. Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley, with dramatic direction by Bill Karn. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking, and inviting you to listen again next week, one hour earlier, when we present for RCA Victor... Screen Director's Playhouse, star Jimmy Stewart, production Magic Town, director William Wellman... Your tune for the stars on NBC.